the bad guys are very good at sharing information. They're actually better at sharing information than the good guys. We need to share um, more information about indicators of compromise, about sources of risk, about known bad actors, about their techniques for us to be more effective because these adversaries are more determined, because they're more sophisticated. So if I understand my risks, if I can understand what's going on in my environment, if I can appropriately apply my controls, and I can incorporate and share information and make myself more effective, that's the way we're going to build security, and that's the way we're going to support build trust. It's going to be about leverage of big data, leverage of data. What, how can we turn the information we have into actionable security tools and indicators and other things that make it more effective? That's the challenge we have, and it's a, it's a very, um, it's a big fundamental challenge because it really forces organizations to really rethink and re-architect how they're doing security. You know, they have to change how they budget. They have to change the internal skill sets of their security practitioners. You know, today we're really focused around things like um, prevention. And we, we spend very little time on monitoring and even less time on incident response. And we need a much more even split across those three disciplines, across prevention, monitoring, and incident response to really deal with today's threats. I think it does differ a little bit by vertical industry. I think the industries that are on the forefront that have been driving security and pushing vendors you know, forward, finance, um, banking, um, those type, they've already seen and they're already using some of these techniques. I mean, think about online banking. You know, um, and where we've gone, and you know, the percentage that is migrated, um, uh, all of those transactions that are migrated to online. You know, this is very sensitive information with a huge amount of criminals that are they're attacking it at, at any given time. Um, has a huge expectation around the level of convenience and the level of service from a consumer perspective, and yet we've overcome all those things um, and seen a tremendous growth. Right, so I see the trend more, and so then you know, what are the other industries that are going to drive that? Forward? Forward. You know, things like telecommunications, uh, for one, you know, where they're already dealing with huge amounts of data and how they can leverage that uh, is, a, is another good example. Obviously, governments, you know, government is, um, they are starting to see some of the, uh, some of the, you know, cyber attacks and become focuses of them. So they have, they've had to evolve their defense doctrines and how, and how they do that around security. So I see it more on a vertical basis. And again, that's why information sharing is so important. The people who are on the cutting edge need to share more information just like the bad guys are doing. Um, and that's why RSA specifically has been advocating in the industry through our um, you know, keynotes and our executive speeches and other things, and testimony of various governments um, uh, and, and legislative bodies and other things like that, um, critically important. Where, where do we get sources of information about these things? So the first is, um, and, and I think where we've seen the most traction to date, even though we haven't seen that much, is in communities of interest. So what we have seen, for example, is the financial community come together and say, you know, these are the type of actors that are coming at us. Here are some of the known bad IP addresses. Here are some of the techniques that they use. RSA actually coordinates and offers a service that we call the eFraud Network, where we share um, information on actors and attacks and bad IPs and things like that through a community of... Um, member financial institutions and banks. And that's been very effective. So I think we need to see that in other industries. We need to, we need to see the sharing among like-minded communities of interest where they have kind of a shared interest to um, secure their own industry. Um, but there needs to be more progress. The other thing, and we're seeing this from a, from a governmental and regulatory and legislative perspective, is um, governments need to get better at sharing. Um, they have a responsibility to share some of the intelligence or a lot of the intelligence that they are seeing because they are monitoring you know, the critical infrastructure, they are monitoring their um, you know, government networks and other things and they are you know, a lot of the targets here. They can share some of that information and we're starting to see some of that, um, some movement along that. Now, your other question about how do we get better at incident response, I think the first thing is a recognition that we have to get better at incident response. Is, is the idea that, um, to your point, um, it's not um, have you been compromised, it's, or it's not will you be compromised, it's what happens when you, when you are compromised. And really the task becomes a recognition or a shift in mindset to say, 
I'm not going to keep everyone out of my network, but my goal has to be, and I'm not going to stop trying to do that, right? But my goal has to be, if someone is able to get in, that they can't do damage, that they can't create loss to the business. And so they have to really focus, instead of keeping everybody out, about speeding up their response time, how quickly they can detect an attack in progress and shut it down. So we have a, we have a concept that we call um, dwell time. You know, the amount of time that someone is in your network. So reducing that dwell time, um, very, very important. Reduce the, uh, you know, create more friction for attackers to get in, be able to detect attacks as quickly as possible, and reduce the dwell time, reduce the amount of time that the attackers are on the network. That's where the mind, you know, it starts with the mindset shift that not everyone's going to be able to be kept out, but really, what do I then measure and what do I focus on? It's those three disciplines.